Erica, you talked about making a, a change in the starting lineup, and I was wondering if, if it's Desi that you were talking about, and, and uh, even whether it is or isn't, just what do you see he needs to do to uh, kind of get his game back? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with regards to the starting lineup, I think anytime um, you know, that you've lost a game, you got to always try to reevaluate, reassess where your lineup, you know, looks like. Um, and then there's also, you know, if you don't have a set lineup that you're, that you're, you know, like we were in a group for a while, um, having won those games, game after game after game, and uh, that lineup had developed some chemistry. And, and, and um, you know, right now we might be a game by game, you know, different lineup based on matchups and so on and so forth. And, and then with Desi, it's just, you know, I think it's confidence. It's, uh, you know, if, if he's not getting, um, you know, if he's not knocking down a shot, it's, you know, getting a steal or, uh, you know, coming up with an energy play, um, you know, it's, and it's not just one particular player, it's everybody. It's like, you know, if you go down the floor and you don't get, you know, a shot after two or three trips up the floor, you got, you know, you got to go create something on your own, whether it's like I said, a steal or a defensive rebound and you bust out or, you run, run the wing really hard and get a open, open shot transition or an open layup in transition. So, um, you know, I think the biggest thing across the board, just with our players is, is consistency. Um, you know, knowing what you're going to get, everybody has good games, everybody has bad games, but um, you know, can you not have extreme highs and extreme lows across the board for our players? We'll, you know, we'll make our, a team better with with consistency since he was kind of your sixth man a lot of times last year could he kind of interchange with noda in in that kind of uh kind of day? i mean yeah i mean right right now nate i mean we didn't have everybody at practice yesterday um I, i'm not sure who we, we start you know here in a little bit i don't know who's uh, going to be at practice who's going to be available um you know, so it's I'm not going to speculate on who, how we're, what we're doing or who who's going to start, because, um, like I said, we didn't have everybody at practice yesterday. I'm not going to get into who was or wasn't. Um, we'll, you know, we'll make the starting lineup. I'm not going to speculate between two guards on who might and who might not. We'll we'll just kind of, you know, see who's available today and go through matchups and, and talk to the players about matchups, because I'm a big believer in asking the guys who they feel comfortable guarding once they've watched them on video. So, um, you know, what I will tell you, which is what I've told you guys, you know, after the last game is, is there could be a change in the starting lineup. Thank you. Nikki. Yeah. Coach Muss with, with Jalen being one of your three seniors and Justin out and, and Vance, you know, being inconsistent, how happy are you with what Tate has brought to your team? And is he satisfying the expectations you had for him? Yeah, I think so, Nikki. I mean, he, you know, Jalen's like, uh, he's great in the, like in the uh, locker room, pregame, postgame, halftime. He's a, he's a really good voice for us. Um, you know, I thought he was really vocal yesterday when we got together. Um, but yeah, then on the floor from a defensive standpoint, you know, it's from a, from a coach, uh, coaching staff perspective, when you're able to kind of have a guy guard, either the point guard, the off guard or the small forward, much like we did last year with Jimmy, um, you know, we're not worried about Jalen being too small to guard somebody at the two or the three spot. And that's, that's a real luxury. Um, and then, I, you know, I think he's, like, I, you know, I kind of said before we played any games, I, I, I felt like he was going to be a guy that um, was underrated shooting because he spent so much time um, shooting the basketball in the offseason. But, yes, he's, he's been great, Nicky, on, on kind of both sides of the ball. Bob. Um, hey, Eric, how you doing? Um, you know, you said after the Auburn game that looking at the way the schedule laid out, the – first part that that was you know almost a must win and now after a couple of tough losses and with Alabama and LSU on the road coming up and uh, does this have another kind of must win feel to it even though it's still early in the season yeah I mean I would I, I mean I'm not going to tell the team you know pregame um, 
or the day before what what are must and and what aren't must wins. This is an important game for us because it's a home game, Bob, and um, and we do have two really challenging games coming up. But Georgia is, in my opinion, you know, one of the most um, underrated teams. I think that that Coach Crean's done an incredible job um, with this team. They have an identity. They play really fast. They do a great job offensive rebounding. Um, they got a lot of experience. Justin Keir, a grad transfer. Horn at the four spot, number 24, a grad transfer. Wheeler, a younger player who, you know, is coming off a really good freshman year, who's now done a great job being the catalyst um, for them from a transition offensive standpoint. Kamara, number 10, presents problems because he runs the floor so well. Um, but this is a team, and we saw it. Um, you know, we had a lot of time after the last game in the locker room, so we were able to watch some of the um, LSU-Georgia um, game, and that thing obviously went, you know, overtime, and, uh, and they played LSU great. You know, it's, it's tough in a game like that that either team has to lose, but Georgia's a really, really good basketball team. And, and you alluded to you had a little extra time there in, in Knoxville. I know you're an early riser. Getting home at say 4 a.m. Uh, did you? How much sleep did you get? And how does that kind of mess with your body clock? I guess. Yeah, when you lose, when we lose, I don't sleep. Um, anyhow, um, you know, I forget what those little gummies are called that help you sleep. Um, uh, sleeping pills? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it starts with the M. Melatonin. Yeah, melatonin. Yeah, usually Danielle gives me like two of those. Um, when I got home, there was about nine of them sitting um, <laughs> on, on the counter. Um, I didn't take any um, of those gummies. Uh, I just sat and stared at the stat sheet and waited for Mariah to get up to go to school and gave her a hug and started the day off. So I didn't get much sleep at all, but, um, you know, the, uh, that was not a fun travel night. And KK, his foot, you mentioned the other night, he said it had been bugging him just going back, you know, to red white. How's he doing? Yeah, I haven't talked to, um, you know, to the training staff yet. Yesterday he got x-rayed. Uh, there was nothing on the x-ray. Um, you know, he will have an MRI today. And then, you know, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, the trainers and doctors will look at that and, and try to determine, you know, what the next course of action is. Okay, I, I got a couple more, but I'll, I'll turn it back to Mike, but thanks. Scotty. Hey, Coach, I think you said in the preseason that you wanted JD to be a little bit more engaged defensively on a consistent basis. Have you seen him maybe take a step forward there or, or what's just been your assessment of his, his play on that end? Yeah. You know, Scotty, we kind of, you know, we knew when JD came that, you know, he was a great one-on-one -on -one player um, basically played the off guard his whole life. You know, he kind of slides over to play some point for us when Jalen needs to take a, a little bit of a break. And, and um, we knew it was going to be a work in progress with J, JD as, as a point guard because he, by nature, is a scoring guard. Um, he, I thought last game was his best game. I mean, he and I sat down and we talked about shot selection and we talked about, you know, here are some potential reads when you draw a second and third defender. And, um, you know, when you're dribble driving to your right hand, that, that corner spray out with your right hand is a great pass. And, and if you're driving the ball to your left, you know, you got to work on maybe a left-hand hook pass to, to, to Connor. And so... We talked about different angles um, and different reads on passing, both in pick and roll situations. And, and he's got to continue to evolve as, as a reader with the ball in his hands and, and try to, um, you know, not pick up what that defensive scheme is looking like. You got to kind of read the rotations. Um, and, you know, I, the second part of that is when you're coming off the bench, it gives you a great opportunity um, you know, at least it should that you're sitting there going, all right, we just ran a middle pick and roll um, and they hard hedged. 
So what's my reads when I go in the game? That, that just that thought process, I think, is a is a continuing evolving process for somebody that maybe hasn't played that position his whole life. Do you have any thoughts on him defensively, like steals? I mean, I think he's blocked a few shots as a six one guy, pretty good deflections guy too. Yeah, great uh, anticipation. Um, I would like him to get a lot lower defensively. I think he could be much more of a of a defensive. Um, problem for opponents he, I mean he is a problem for him jumping in passing lanes and so on and so forth but but we want him to continue to get better I mean that's a point of emphasis because I again I think because he's got you know he's a great reader on defense on passing angles and he gets he's got long arms he's got good anticipation um, and I you know I think he should aspire to be uh, you know an even better uh, defender than maybe what he's shown at times, Scotty. But yeah, he's he can block shots at six one and and really good getting his hands on balls. Curtis, hey coach. Obviously Georgia at the forefront, but you do have a a string of games here. It looks like with with a team that has some forwards that are just more athletic and and maybe fast as opposed to the traditional bigs. With the emergence of Jalen Williams and his role, and then also Vance Jackson kind of breaking out the other night. Do you feel a little bit more comfortable about how the team can handle that without Justin Smith? Yeah, I mean, Justin's, you know, he's the perfect guy to, to play guys that are those hybrid. Um, you know, Vance had a great game the other night against, an, uh, you know, an awesome front line of, of Tennessee. And uh, I thought Jalen came in and played with great energy as well um, and played really well. So, yeah, we certainly, you know, I think, Curtis, we need uh, both those guys, you know, while Justin's out, we need those guys to really step up. And, you know, if we want to play a little smaller, maybe maybe Jalen plays some center when Connor's not in and and Vance can obviously play the four. And, and we've played Vance at some five as well. So, um, yeah, we do have some options, I think. Um, you know, when Vance is out there, he becomes, you know, we become a team that has five shooters on the floor. Um, which certainly helps space the floor for our dribble drive guys as well. Coach. Coach, you kind of mentioned that Georgia likes to play really fast. What, what would you say are your kind of keys or points of emphasis with the team this week, you know, getting ready for the Bulldogs? Yeah, I think one, you got, you know, you got to get back in transition. You got to keep them off the offensive rebound boards. Not, you know, you can't get, give horn or, or Kyer, number 24, number five, any open three balls. Um, Wheeler, number two at the point, can also make a three. Uh, Kamara is, is as good of uh, athlete and runner of the floor in transition at the five spot, number 10. And then uh, number 14, they're, they're, uh, they're off, they're uh, small forward, does a great job crashing the offensive glass. He's a really, really good cutter. Um, you know, so I think those are some of the things that we're trying, you know, to emphasize, you know, transition defense, defensive blockouts, um, taking care of the ball. They're a really high steel team as well. Bob. Um, Eric, you know, uh, I know two games in the in a big streak, but you guys had won nine in a row, played really well and um, had a rough game against Missouri, played pretty well against Tennessee, but Kind of what's the mindset, what's your mindset, what's the team's mindset with having your first, you know, back-to-back -back losses of the year? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, when you get into league play and you, and you, I mean, basically it's across the board, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I felt, I thought, thought we had a, you know, without Justin Smith, I thought we had an opportunity to win the game against Tennessee um, and they were coming off a loss. So, I didn't feel like our team walked into, uh, you know, Tennessee and felt anything other than we're going to go try to win the game. I thought they competed like that. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't see that being any different. I don't think we're fragile or anything like that. I think anytime you lose, um, you know, you, you might lose a little bravado or whatever, but um, every game takes on its own identity, its own theme. Uh, Georgia lost a tough game at LSU. They're going to be ready to play. I know their head coach's competitive nature. Um, he's a workaholic. I mean, he, and his and his team takes on his personality. Like this, this is going to be two really, really hard playing teams on Saturday is, is what I hope. Although we have not played well 
in, in our two early Saturday games. Uh, that's got to change. And then this will be your third game without Justin. I'm, I'm sure you can't wait to have him back. But do you feel like you guys are sort of adjusting to not the, – the more you play without him, the more you're getting, you know, better without playing without him, I guess. Yeah, and just about the time I'll have it figured out, he'll come back. That's, you know, takes <laughs> I'm a slow, slow learner on this. But we um, – yeah, I think we're getting better, Bob. I really do. I mean, I think that, you know, Vance, you know, it's important that it's important that Vance plays with great consistency. It's important, uh, you know, that the guys that, that are playing substantial minutes, uh, that they play with consistency so that we can form a rotation. When you have inconsistent play uh, out on the floor, you're going to have some inconsistent rotations. And I would much prefer to know what I'm getting from a player. Um, you know, then, 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 and, and we've had it of late, you know, we've had some great games, not so great. Just give me something in the middle would be, would be really nice. And then I guess uh, Mizzou had to postpone their game with LSU and Carolina had to postpone their game with Ole Miss. They may have LSU play, play Ole Miss. I don't know, but have you gotten any indication from Georgia that, that you know, they're okay and they'll be able to, to play? Has, has there been any word from the SEC that this game's iffy or anything i i mean i assume we're playing i mean i'm getting ready to go i mean i hope i mean i missed a lot of tv shows with my wife the last 24 hours i hope that we're playing the game because i've been watching georgia and i mean yeah i mean, I, I don't know why we wouldn't bob i mean i, I just assume we are i mean Right. Well, uh, yeah, I just meant you, I think if there was some, some issue, they, the SEC or Georgia would let you know by now. I just was curious about that. Well, I do, I do think Bob along those lines, I mean, you just never know. Cause it depends, you know, like if we tested yesterday and we get our results back this morning, everything's great on our end. I, I don't know, you know, I never know when our opposing team is doing their COVID test, you know? And so sometimes you might do it the day, before you leave on a trip and get it that day, you know, I think that's why we've seen, you know, some games canceled. I mean, shoot, Curry got pulled last night during the game in an NBA game, you know, cause the test results came back in game. So I think it's just, Hey man, it's the way we, you just kind of roll with what you roll with. But you guys got your test results back this morning. You said and everything's good. Okay. <laughs>